We're taking a look at the base coins from the Legendary Metal Coins Season 6 Kickstarter. Before we get deeper into this review, we do have to thank Draw Lab for sending us a collector's set of the base coins in this season. Yeah, so Draw Lab Games launched their first Legendary Metal Coins Kickstarter back in March 10th, 2015. Now, that original Kickstarter project was funded in under a day. Now, that was something rare back in 2015. Gaming projects didn't tend to do that well. This was still kind of the early days of gaming Kickstarter. Now, that set contained 11 different coins, and since then, Draw Lab has launched five more seasons of coins, including the current season, Season 6, which is actually live right now on Kickstarter. Every one of these projects has funded and delivered successfully. Due to this, I think Draw Lab is a company you don't have to worry about supporting on Kickstarter. Given the fact that we've held the base set in our hands, mm -hmm. means manufacturing is under control. They don't still have to build the molds or anything. Yeah, these are a finished product that they're selling at this point, as far as I can tell, except maybe the stretch goal ones haven't been made. Now, speaking of stretch goals, what we're looking at tonight are the coins that are included in the currently active Season 6 Kickstarter. And what we were sent is one of each of the non-stretch goal coins, which are broken over nine different sets. And the reason they didn't send the stretch goals is they didn't know if they were going to fund or not, which makes perfect sense. Now, this sixth set features three concepts. The first is something totally new called Forged Coins. These are a new series of coins based on some of their older sets that feature more three-dimensional effects. Now, what I don't know and I didn't do the research to check is if these are actually the same as their old patterns or just based on their older patterns. But the depth of these coins is very pleasing and very tactile. Um, I was really impressed with these sets. A uh, bit of a spoiler for my final thoughts. The next thing they added in Season 6 are, of course, new coins. Every Kickstarter of Legendary Metal Coins is going to introduce some new sets. Um, there are four totally new and unique sets in this season. Now, again, the Ford sets are new, but based on previous designs, these are four completely new designs of coins. What we also have are something else completely new, and these are adventure sets. These are some unique and interesting coins that really aren't coins. They're more like tokens to be used during your fantasy games. So just took a quick look, and they are not exactly the same. So these, these Forge okay. coins are not just uh, a more detailed or more uh, textured duplicate of the original. Uh, the That's dry, cool. Yeah, so... We'll see that. Now, the best way to see each of these coins is to watch our unboxing video, where you can hear mm -hmm. Mo's thoughts as he opens up each set one by one and sometimes struggle trying to figure out what some of them are meant to depict. Yes. All right, now that I've uh, taken a look at all of these coins and I've had them out, and I've been fiddling with them for the last few days and showing them off to my wife and my kids, uh, what I want to do tonight is share my thoughts on each of these sets. Now, for those of you here live watching or watching this on YouTube, I will be holding up every coin as I mention it, but do realize that some people are going to be consuming this as an audio podcast, so what I'm going to try to do is describe the coins as I hold them up. It's going to be a pretty vague description, not small details, but it give you an idea of what I'm holding up here. Now again, our unboxing video is probably a better place to look for a look at each coin, because... I used a green screen and I was able to do some close-up shots of them um, while I was opening everything. So I think that's probably one of the better ways. Plus, I will be taking pictures of these to put them up on the blog version of the review as well. Also, if it's not yet April 19th, you can check mm. out high-resolution images on the Kickstarter. Though I will note that these, de these do seem slightly better detailed than the mm. actual coins Mo got in some instances. Now, what I think I'll do here is I'm going to take all the coins first. So we're going to look at all the coins in the set, and then we'll look at the adventure set separately. Now, for the coins, unlike our usual list of stuff, uh, normally we do things in no particular order. You know what? I'm going to do these in order tonight, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my least favorite set, go to my favorite set, that way saving the best for last. So the first set of coins are the pixel art unit. Uh, this was my least favorite set of coins, though I can see other people digging these. Uh, I've never really been into the whole pixel art nostalgia thing. Um, I personally think it's for people who didn't have to live through those days of playing bad graphic video games and 8-bit graphics. It's for people who think that looks neat and nifty. Uh, now, all of these coins are perfectly square. Now, square, not cubes. They're, they're still the same width of the other coins in the set. Um, 
what these do have on them is the copper has a C on one side and then a couple cups. And then on the other side features a dragon and the word copper all pixelated. Um, everything's pixel style graphics. Now, slightly larger, we come to the silver, which has a pixelated S on it and some coins. And then on the other side has like a generic fantasy warrior type, says the word silver, and the warrior type is saying the words, fear not my lady. Now the gold has a G on the one side with a couple of gold bars. And on the other side has the lady, I have to assume, a princess, a pixelated princess saying, help save me and the word gold. Again, everything all 8-bit jaggy style graphics. Now, while I don't have a use for these, I think they are really cute and they fit that genre quite well. Mm -hmm. Though I suspect more of a keepsake than as a coin uh, to use in a game, perhaps. But that sure. was the pixel art unit. Next, we have the planet set. These are oval shaped um, and all almost the same size. Like they are very different. Like the other set are maybe two millimeters difference. This is like one millimeter, half a millimeter difference. Now the copper features uh, the surface of the moon showing the earth in the distance off the horizon. Um, pretty classic picture everyone remembers from the original moon landings. And on the other side has a space shuttle launch with your standard Challenger style shuttle. Uh, this is a nice deep coin that you can really uh, feel the texture on. Next up, the silver, we have a satellite over uh, orbiting over a planet on one side. And then on the other side, we have uh, like three planets in orbit. It's like they kind of took like an orbital picture of the galaxy and zoomed in. You can kind of tell uh, Saturn's here. And this one's rather flat on this side. You can't really feel much of it. Whereas the uh, satellite side is a little more etched and deeper. Finally, we have the gold set, which is the flattest of all of them. Uh, there's really not a lot of depth to this. On one side uh, is what appears to be like cave drawings of constellations or ancient constellations, and the other side has a galaxy. Uh, these are a bit of a mixed bag to me. Like the copper coin is nice and deep, as I showed there, with nice 3D artwork, whereas the galaxy constellation and planet sides of the other coins are, are nearly flat. Like there's really not a lot of depth there. I have to admit, I had a hard time figuring out what this constellation was the first time I looked at it until I finally uh, noticed the Big Dipper and someone else pointed out in our chat room that there was what was actually showing on it. So that was another great set of beautifully made keepsakes. They suggest yeah. using them in games like Race for the Galaxy, and I just struggle to see that happening. But they are, again, quite pretty. And that was the Planets coin set. Now, to speak about not recognizing what the patterns are on the coins, uh, the Norse set gave me the most difficulty during the unboxing video due to some of the patterns on them. These coins all feature a Norse god on them and uh, some type of tied-in symbol on the other side. We're going to start with the copper. The copper features a Norse god with a horned helm with some um, runic around the outside and then a stylized Midgard, Midgard Serpent on the other side. I'm guessing this is Loki, but I can't confirm that for sure. Silver is the one that gave me the most difficulty, though the one side shows a, a Norse hammer, a Thor's hammer, so that obviously means the other side should be Thor himself. But I had a hard time recognizing this one. I think I've got it. See, even here. There we go. <laughs> Hopefully you can see Thor there. So you have a very stylized Thor with like a, a pattern around the outside of it. So that is the silver Norse god coin. Then we get to the Odin on the gold. I'm trying to find the right side up here. So we have the Odin on the gold with a Vaknut or Odin's triangle on the other side. Again, with some different patterns on the outside edges. I do think it's worth noting that the uh, Vaknut has been used by hate groups recently, have been co-opted by that, so there may be some concerns with this particular symbol, but it is Odin's Triangle on an Odin coin, which I think makes sense to me. Now, overall, these are decent. Um, they have a kind of worn, ancient, beat-up look to them that I really like. It fits thematically, but they tried to put so much detail into the actual gods, they make them hard to see. Like, uh, even the Midgard Serpent just kind of looks messy instead of well-detailed. I would love to see a forged version of this set with deeper carvings in it. Yeah, and this was uh, the set that, to me, most suggested the slight difference in detail quality between those Kickstarter images and mm. the actual coin. Though, 
still a fantastic set for Norse mythology lovers. That was the Norse gods coin set. All right, next is the Atlantis set. This one really stuck out to me uh, for featuring really cool designs as well as not featuring perfectly round coins. Now, similar to the Norse set, these kind of look beat up and well used, but more so, these actually look like they were unprofessionally cast, so they're not perfectly round. Now, the first one is the copper, which is round, but has about a three millimeter notch at the top of the coin or bottom of the coin, however you hold it. And that's on a side, uh, and the one side has like a labyrinth on it or a maze. And then on the other, you have a trident, you know, your typical three pronged fork. The silver from the Atlantis set um, is really noteworthy because it just has abstract patterning on one side that again isn't properly centered that gives to that whole um, it was unprofessionally minted and then the other side has like a bunch of unreadable script like uh, you're looking at like a I don't know almost a Rosetta Stone kind of look to it now what's really striking about this is there is a giant A cut out of the stone like literally you can see through this coin through the A on the stone or sorry on the coin which I thought was a really neat touch Finally, we have the gold. Um, the gold here is very, it's roughly round. Uh, it's the most non-even edge out of all of the coins in the set. And it features a octopus on one side. And then on the other side, you have a mermaid and a crab. Now notable of this is similar to the A on the last one. This has a hole cut through it. Now that sticks to um, traditions of some of the ancient coins of the real world where people would put thread or, or have these on a necklace or on a bracelet to be able to store their coins. So that is the Atlantis set. And I thought they were the most distinct, I think, out of all the sets. Yeah, these have the most old world historical coin feel. You can really believe looking at these that they were dig up by, dug up by some archaeologist somewhere. Uh, and that is the Atlantis coin set. All right, next we're going to get into the Forged set. And we're going to start off with the Forged Cultist set. Now, as mentioned earlier, the Forged coins are based on existing patterns, but not exact to them. Uh, as we did find out, Sean was able to see they did change up the patterns. So it's inspired by older sets, but these are unique patterns. And these are just much more three-dimensional in nature. Um, I love this three-dimensionality. I, I love the patterns on these coins. It, like It's deep enough you can trace them with your fingers. I love just holding on to these and kind of kind of rubbing them like there's just something cathartic about it i actually think these would be great fidget toys uh for or for someone who um benefits from stimming just give them a set of these coins just to kind of hold on to and play with now the copper features uh, an egyptian headdress on a skull with a crown and a bunch of tentacles behind it um, i immediately think nair lathotep and then on the other side you have um, a runic eyeball surrounded by more eyeballs and some concentric symbols, uh, circles with symbols around it. Uh, basically a bunch of runes on there. Then we get to the silver, which uh, there's a kind of beholder-ish looking thing, which is a mess of eyeballs all held together by a bunch of tentacles. Uh, this is the deepest coin of the set for feel and touch. You can really feel the eyeballs. Then on the other side, you have some kind of stellar gate symbol with an eyeball i'm trying to describe the 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 cthulhu themed stuff here is just probably just going to stretch my own sanity um so you have an eye and some runes and symbols and this gate looking thing on that side and then we get to the final gold coin which features more tentacles and eyes uh, more like a pile of four eyes in the middle with tentacles growing from it and then the other side an abstract kind of curvy symbol with six points inside a couple concentric rings that also have six points on them um, again, trying to understand them more than that would probably just cause some sand loss. <laughs> Not personally into the theme of this, but the quality is undeniable and they still keep a hint of that old coin feel from the Atlantis set. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the forged cultist set. Now the forged dragon set was the first set I opened and immediately set the mood for what I discovered going forward. Like I opened these and I'm like, Oh, these are even nicer than I thought. I just couldn't wait to look at the next set. And actually I did. I held off until we did an unboxing video and that was hard to do. Again, these are, these are featuring nice, deep patterns, nice, deep cuts. These are a forged set. So you've got that really nice uh, texture to them. The copper features a large forward facing dragon head, um, surrounded by a ring with a pattern on it. And then on the other side, you have a more abstract serpent style dragon on, on the back side of it. Then we get to the silver, which 
features a dragon head in profile this time with some like wispy smoke around it and um a braided pattern on the outside and then we get to the other side has an abstract i would say celtic gaelic style dragon with a pattern on the around the outside of that and then we get to the final gold coin and this is actually my favorite of the designs it's an orboro style dragon where it's eating its own tail and it's around a dragon egg with um very game of thrones looking scaly dragon egg and on the other side you have a very heraldic style dragon surrounded by celtic knotwork this is a really impressive set. I really like the look of these ones. I'm very impressed by them. Well, not the fanciest ones we're going to talk about. These might be my favorite for their looks. And the copper Fair. one in particular really catches my eye. Uh, that is the Forged Dragon set. All right, the Forged Dwarven set, which is our final Forged set, is, as you can see, a another set that's not actually round. Instead, these are angular and geometric, which I actually think fits dwarves very well. Now, the copper is hexagonal, features an anvil on one side and a dwarven helmet on the other side, um, as well as some patterns on the background. Um, kind of not work looking, but more angular. It's not curvy. It's very straight. Uh, reminds me of the Not Dice Squared 2 expansion, actually, <laughs> the way those are designed. Then we move on to the silver, which is also hexagonal, but bigger, with a big double-bladed axe. And then um, a, a, a dwarven gateway, like a doorway. You know, I think of uh, the Halls of Durin or something like that. And on the other side, for any Warhammer fans out here, this is obviously a dwarf inspired by the Troll Slayer character class from the Warhammer world with the, the grizzly beard, the bald head, and a huge mohawk uh, in a ring surrounded by runes. And then finally, we get to the Dwarven King, which is a stylized... The gold coin features a stylized uh, Dwarven King with a uh, bejeweled beard and hair and a helmet um, with a pattern behind it. Um, I'm not sure how many sides this is, but it's, it's two sides more than a hexagon. So an heptagon, possibly octagon. Uh, maybe this would be an Yeah, this would be an octagon. No, it's not enough sides for an octagon. Anyway, again, angular sides. Uh, these are my favorite out of all the sets. I really love the look of these Dwarven coins. It makes me want a set of Elven coins just because I feel like if I have Dwarven coins, I need Elven coins. But I really dig these. A great gift for all your Dwarven friends. <laughs> that was the Forged Dwarven set. All right, next we have the two adventure sets. And I'm going to start with the Adventure Potion sets. Now, there are two of these included in the set, and they have a rather unique potion-like shape, one being a, a round bottom and the other being kind of a half-crescent bottom. And at the bottom of these, it's kind of notched, and in it, they put glossy lacquer in it. And there's a, a red potion and a blue potion. And when I first saw these, I was a little disappointed because the other sides have no lacquer and they just look unfinished. And it wasn't until I went to the Kickstarter page and I saw them showing like a D and D character sheet and someone flipping it over. I was like, Oh, that's supposed to represent the empty potion. The problem is like the divots there for where the lacquer would go. And I just wish they had put clear lacquer on that other side. I think that would have been the next step that really would have kicked these up a notch. Cause as it looks, it just, to me, the backs look unfinished. I would have liked it more the other way. These seem like a cool way to track potions. Uh, the only problem I have is with the collector set, I just have two. And like what D&D &D party only ever has two potions. I just, I think you'd need a lot more of these. But they are still really cool tokens they could probably use for other things like inspiration or something else. And that was the adventure potions. All right, finally we get to the final set of... Uh, coins which I'm, I'm holding up air quotes right now uh these are the adventure weapons these are the most impressive as far as how they're made and how well crafted they are um each of these features a fantasy weapon of some type in a ring and they're twice as thick as the rest of the coins like i think they to make these they probably took two coins and somehow pressed them together now the outside edge of these coins forms a ring of some type on all three of these sets and then in the middle is a weapon and it's kind of like suspended there because all the negative space around the weapon is cut out. So you can totally see through these. It's like the weapon's kind of hanging there in the ring. Now there's a hammer, an axe, and a sword. Now the hammer is two-sided and both sides are identical. Like it looks the same. Now the axe is also two-sided. And something I totally missed when I did the uh, unboxing video is there are words around the outside of the axe. And it says, warriors don't show their heart until the axe reveals it. And this is cool, 
but on one side that's readable and on the other it's in reverse letters like it's it's not readable which is just a weird choice for me especially because the sword is the most impressive of the bunch because it's two-sided and the two sides are actually different so on the sword coin what they did is you have um on, on the one side you have the full sword showing basically like, like not the full blade but you can see the sword it's in in the front and it's overlaid over two rings one deeper than the other well the other side of it is seeing only the part of the sword you can see through the rings so it's a distinctly two different sides on this one which is a really nice effect but makes me wonder why they didn't do something similar for the axe at least to flip the words now while i think these are really cool i don't know what to do with these like, these aren't coins. These are some kind of tokens. And I don't know if I'd want to put them on an adventure map. I don't know. Like, I think they'd be great for, like, inspiration. Here, you earned inspiration. But then why does it matter if it's a sword or an axe? Maybe you use it to represent a magic item. Like, oh, you found the, the plus two flame bringer, and here's a token to represent it. Though I don't know why you need it. I, they're neat, but I'm just not sure what I would do with them. So these, to me, are token more than coin. They wouldn't look out of yeah. place on a map uh, as a character marker. So you can have your party represented Fair. by these on a map, uh, or even if you could find a way to make them into a standee for, for moving around. Um, mm. But that was the adventure weapons. Yeah, now note these weren't considered, like they're in Legendary Metal Coins, that's the name of the Kickstarter, but they don't try to sell them as coins. They are, they are adventure tools as that which actually if you go on their website and look at the older ones they have things like spell trackers and they've got the elements for gloomhaven like they don't just make coins so what i just showed off coin by coin is basically what they call the collector pledge level where you're going to get one of each coin now again the sets we looked at tonight don't include any additional unlock stretch goals normally you would buy these coins in 24 coin sets they contain 10 copper eight silver and six gold coins now, it's also worth noting that as part of the current Kickstarter, you can also order any of the previously released metal coins. And I got to say, like, having these now, I kind of want the rest. Like, a, the, the collector in me wants legendary metal coins one through five now because they're shiny. Yeah, th these are... Um... <clears throat> wow, I completely lost. Uh, <laughs> uh, these, they're beautiful, though. With that beauty and fine crafting comes a cost. They're definitely not something you're going to try and buy for all your games. No, totally fair. Now, I got to say, I knew I liked the coins before I agreed to check these out. Like when, when I, I, I approached um, Draw Lab to, to ask for a review copy of these, and, I, and I'm like, I'm going to like these no matter what, right? And then they showed up, and I'm like, I was actually even more impressed seeing them in person. Like these are some of the nicest metal coins I've held in my hands, and better than pretty much every metal coin set I have have in my extensive collection of games downstairs. These are nice coins. Yeah. I commented earlier that the detail seen on the Kickstarter isn't quite what we saw in some of those coins, mm. but that's not really a complaint. It is the most slight of differences. Uh, I would really say it was only an issue noticeably on that Thor coin. Um, they've got yeah. their QC locked down after, you know, five seasons pre previous to this. Yeah, I did admit, like, I, the, during the unboxing, I could not see Thor on that coin. Even with the hint of a hammer on the other side, I'm like, I don't know what this is. Part of it is, like, if you don't hold it at the right angle, you just, you're going to miss it. Yeah. Now, the other thing that did surprise me, um, actually quite a bit, is these are lighter than most of the coins I have in my existing games. Um, most recently, I'd played um, Raiders of the North Sea, which has metal coins, and they're like thinner little pieces, and they have more weight than even the gold coins do here. And I was confused enough about this that I actually contacted Draw Lab, and I asked, I'm like, what's up? Why are, why are these so light? And for one, they noted I'm the first person ever to complain they're light. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not complaining. I'm not trying to say they're too light. I was just surprised that they were lighter than the other coins I have. Well, it ends up what they've done to make every single one of these is their base is zinc. So they make the coin in zinc, and then they plate it with various different metals to make the copper, silver, and gold colors. Now, zinc is softer than copper. So while I certainly wouldn't expect many to try and damage these beautiful <laughs> coins, I do wonder how much rough handling they could take from a rowdy RPG group, accidental dropping, getting nudged mm. by chairs, or accidentally, God forbid, a chair leg coming down on top of one of them. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I And I don't, no offense, I don't really want to try <laughs> with my particular set to see what damage we can do to them. Uh, maybe that'll be a future live the, stream. The pixel we'll art, how, we, if we, we can, can put them on a pair of flyers and, 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 bend and see if they bend. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, that's probably what i do with these ones. It might be worth doing. Uh, we might look into doing that future. Now, the original sets that came out from uh, Season 1, and I don't know why they changed. Maybe it was cost. Did send them to you in drawstring bags? So, obviously, they felt they'd be fine to bounce around in a pouch. So, I, I think they, they're expected to survive contact with each other, at least. But, yeah, someone rolling a chair over it, that's something different. Now, as I, I basically already mentioned, of all these coins, the ones that impressed me the most were these Forge sets. Like, I, I really like the depth of these coins. That, that was the first thing that stuck out when I first touched the first Dragon set. It was like, oh, wow. Like, those are some of the deepest cut coins I've ever felt. Yeah. This is great for anyone with vision issues and works well along with the fact that most of these sets are really easy to tell in size by denomination. Well, I wouldn't say really easy. They're easy enough to tell in size by den denomination um, with the planet set being one exception out of these. Yeah, I, the size difference are often only a couple of millimeters or less. Um, so unless you've got all three of them in your hands, you might not be able to easily identify which one you've got in your hand uh, uh, based mm. on size uh so yeah if you were reaching in a bag with all of them you could probably tell them apart yeah but feeling what you have in front of you unless you did have all types it might be difficult yeah. i agree yeah. that's totally true now as for the designs um i obviously like some more than others which is cool like that that's acceptable that's that's what i expect right the advantage of having so many different sets of coins is there's probably something here for everyone well i'll admit i am not really a fan of the pixel art set but i'm sure there are zelda or minecraft fans out there that will love them and i appreciate the number of options like just in this season six is nine different sets of coins and each of those sets has three different coins in it now, one thing did come up while I was looking at these is that a fan of the show, um, Red Meeple Ryan, who also happens to be a blind meeple, asked if there was anything on the edges of the coins to set them apart. Anything you can feel like denominations on the, the edges or a different texture on each type. And sadly, that is something you are not going to find here. All of the round and rounded coins have perfectly smooth edges. The only ones that don't are like the ancient style coins, the Atlantis set, but that's just... They're bumpy, like they're unfinished, and I don't think that's going to actually help you from being able to tell them apart. Or, for example, here's one of the cultist sets, and you can kind of tell it's not quite round. But I don't think feeling that, you're going to know which coin that is. Now, what I did do with this information from Ryan is I reached out to Draw Lab, my contact who sent me these, and I said, hey, I've got a blind meeple here who is wondering if you've done this on any coins and suggested doing it on future sets, and this is something they will start looking into in the future. Um, they noted it was something that hadn't been brought up before and it's something they hadn't considered, but it is something they should be able to do going forward. So uh, that's something I'm looking forward to seeing in Legendary Metal Coins Season 7. It's good to hear that they're open to that sort of, you know, constructive mm -hmm. criticism about uh, their product. Yeah, I just hope it actually leads somewhere. <laughs> now, one of the other things I do think needs to be mentioned, Sean mentioned this, that these are not cheap. They're not, a, they, they, they are not, uh, they are rather expensive. So a standard set, this is the, the MSRP, the standard set of 24 legendary metal coins will cost you $29.99 US. Now that's more than a buck a coin. Now, there are some bulk deals, and there's pledge levels in the current Kickstarter where you can get 10 sets at once that do drop it to cheaper than this. Plus, Draw Lab does offer some non-standard sets where you can get, like, just 10 silver coins and stuff like that that can vary that cost. But just looking at the generic, I want to buy one set of metal coins, you're looking at 30 bucks. Now, that's not cheap, but I don't think it's actually unreasonable. These are some really nice coins. And let's face it, every one of these coins is a luxury item. No one needs to own metal coins for the games. It's a nice to have. It's a, it's a bonus. It's, it's something you can do to bling out and prove your games. Or to add a sense of immersion. Or to add a role-playing element or a prop to your game. And to be honest, I think this price point is perfectly fine for what they are. So that's $30 for 24 coins. But for many games, that's not enough to replace the coins in the game. So you do need to bear that in mind as well. That, that $30 may not you know that one set may not cover what you need 
Yeah, that is a very true point. At one point, um, going to other sets, I backed a Kickstarter for a game I didn't own just to get the metal coins in it. It was an add-on item to use them for um, Galaxy Trucker. And I ended up having to buy four sets to be able to have enough to replace all the cardboard. Now, I didn't do the look to see do you use every token every game, but I just counted how many pieces of 1s, 5s, and 10s come in my cardboard copy and ordered an exact amount to match that. And i got to admit it wasn't cheap, and I'm pretty sure the same thing would happen here. I don't know how many games would have just enough money, like especially if you're playing like a, a game of D&D where your characters might be carrying around hundreds of gold. You're probably not going to want to represent that with metal coins unless you decide that the coppers are each 100 gold or something like that. Now, overall... I expected to be impressed by these. As I said, I, I I reached out to them to say I'd love to check these out, and I was duly impressed. Like these these are very nice. They actually exceeded my expectations. Yes, I preferred some sets over others, but all of the coins are very well made. I, I can't complain about the quality of any of these. The design I might have not liked some as much as others, but you know what? That's fair. You're probably going to feel the same way. Anyone else that looks at it is going to have their favorite set. Uh, even Sean and I each have our, even Sean, Deanna and I each have our own favorite set. Myself being the Dwarven Forge set, uh, Deanna's being the Atlantis set and Sean's being the Dra Forge Dragon set. So even between the three of us, we each have our own favorites. These, I, I, I personally love the Forge sets. I really like the, the deep cut of these i don't think it's a cut i'm pretty sure they're mold like it's injected molded or something but the cut of these or the stamp quality the the depth of the forge coins are really impressive i am looking forward to seeing more forge coins from legendary metal coins i also really like the adventure pieces which aren't coins at all i thought they were really neat like i, I like the set i'm not sure exactly what i do want to do with them but the quality of them and the the ingenuity there is really cool if you're shopping for some high-quality, unique metal coins for your games, I gotta say, Legendary Metal Coins is the place to look. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed. Get the sets you like, avoid the ones you don't, and I think the price is justified, though, as Sean did mention, could get expensive if the game you're trying to upgrade does have a lot of coinage in it. When you've got a chance, be sure to also check out our written review of these coins over at TabletopBellhop.com and be sure to check out Legendary Metal Coins Season 6 on Kickstarter. As of today, Wednesday the 31st day of March, you've got 13 days left mm -hmm. to back.